In the Westcote Railway Station in the year 1905, the agent there was Flannery, the best there was alive. Flannery ran his station exactly by the rule. He tried to learn each one by heart, just like a kid in school. There were rules for each occasion that applied from tools to mules. There were rules about behavior and rules defining rules. Two guinea pigs. Hmm. You sure don't look like pigs to me. But the writing's plain to see. It says you are. And there's no doubt that pigs is what you be. Whenever a customer chanced to call, Flannery let him fry until he could look up the rule to uh, greet the fellow by. <coughs> oh, let's see. Oh, yes. Good morning to you, says Section 2, and don't forget to smile. Morning it was, and have you knew I've been standing here a while? I'm supposed to say I'm sorry, sir, it says in rolling three. Dry your tears and save your sneers. Have you a box of pets for me? Indeed I have. Two guinea pigs. See pigs, page 43. According to the book of rules, your pets are pigs, you see. Pigs, 48 cents. Pets, 44. What? Guinea pigs ain't pigs, they're pets. And I'm paying 44. Pigs is pigs at 48. And rules is rules, what's more. Fools is fools, you stubborn fool. Will you not take 44? The regular rate is 48. Very well, then. You take the high rate, and I'll take the low rate, and I'll not pay you over 44. Whenever an agent gets in a debate, and there is an argument over the rate, the agent must fire for a rule and a pie, and hold on to the package until they reply. Hold them then, and harm them not. And when you find you're wrong, deliver them to my address, healthy, hale, and strong. Then Flannery sat down and sent a telegram away, never dreaming he'd regret it until his dying day. Supervisor's office, Big Town on the Drive. Flannery to Morgan, May 6, 1905. Hauling two animals in a crate. Big dispute regarding rate. Is a guinea pig a pig or pet? Give ruling on the rate to set. Flannery. The supervisor's office was the pride of the company. It received old Flannery's telegram with trained efficiency. They examined the wire and immediately dated it, stamped the receipts and then communicated it to the department that quadruplicated it. Copies were sent out to all of the staff. Each copy received was filed and related to copies of copies, then checked and notated. Nine copies of each were then validated and contents were noted in ink on a graph. A cabbage a day keeps the doctor away. Now, both of you need a name. <laughs> I'll call one of you Pat, and let me see. Uh, Mike, I'll name the other. But he quickly changed it to Marie. <laughs> when Mike became a mother. The saints be praised. Now, ain't that fine? I'm a family man myself. Regards last wire of mine, instead of just two guinea pigs, I now am holding nine. The legal department was then delegated to study the problem now so complicated when all of the data was accumulated to make a report and to tell what they know. The president wanted a full explanation as well as an overall clarification of Flannery's wire that wanted to know if a pig was a pig and to please tell him so. Now the grandchild of the first two pigs had grandsons by the dozens and every time the clock would strike, there were 50 brand new cousins. <laughs> The board of directors convened and debated the question of pigs And were they related to pigs or to rabbits as once indicated by evidence found by the fact-finding staff? A boy in the office at first advocated it, then a zoology professor dictated it. Here is the answer, and here's how he stated it. 
I reiterate on the company's behalf. The guinea pig is the cavia aparoia, while the common pig is the genus sus of the family suidae. They are not pigs. A 44 cent rate applause. Ten copies were sent to the filing clerk and ten to O'Shaughnessy. Then 20 more in triplicate were sent on to McGee. McGee will make a thousand more for all the clerks to see. For the janitor. And the auditor. And, and the, the rest, rest of the company. company. A hundred were sent to the engineers. And the firemen each got four. The section hands got three apiece. And the hobos 20 more. With monotonous regularity, those pigs produce more pigs, while Flannery tried to stem the tide by playing the Irish chick. Regarding the McMore House pigs, the 44 cent rate applies. Signed, Morgan. When Flannery got the telegram, straight down the road he tore to take the news to McMore House. But... McMore House doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> then Flannery wired the office. Tell me quick, what do I do? There is no rule to cover the case, so now it's up to you. Not me, see me, me. See Joe, see Jack, see Larry, see Tom, see Dick, see Harry. Then a clever young clerk made a recommendation that pigs should be sent to the main office station. He never did know of the multiplication of two pigs that grew to a million and two. Flannery loaded the pigs in crates, in boxes, bags, and sacks. He filled 600 boxcars up, according to the facts. After loading all the pigs but two, and looking weak and wan, Flannery turned to the pigs and said, You've begot and begot. No, begone! They unloaded the cars at the main office station and filled up the warehouse, and in desperation they stored away pigs in the whole corporation. The president shouted until he was hoarse. <laughs> Three officials submitted a signed resignation complaining of pigs in the organization. The president demanded an investigation of plannery pigs in the whole office force. Dear President, tis not so bad as it seemed to be once. What if all those million guinea pigs <laughs> had all been elephants? <laughs> <laughs> From that day forward, Flannery swore, No more will I be a fool. Whenever it comes to livestock, blast every single rule. If the animals come in singles, or if they come in sets, if they've got four feet and they're alive, they'll be classified as pets. Oh! <laughs>